You no respect for the dead. <laughs> Sometimes I'd rather like to join them. Well, I wish you would do it sooner rather than later before you ruin my career. So today we are at the lovely abode of John and Colleen Darnell. They have so graciously allowed me to come here and shoot with them. And of course, this, this strapping boy. <laughs> it's mostly his house. I mean, come on, let's, <laughs> let's be honest. It's really not Norma and Kevin's house. <laughs> it's, it's such a pleasure mm -hmm. to be here with you. Um, my name is Colleen Darnell. I'm an Egyptologist. And my husband, John, and I love collecting antique furniture and vintage fashion. Yes. And we are both Egyptologists, and we love collaborating on our Instagram. We also oh, have function. two Basenji dogs. Uh, this is this is Narmer, named Narmer. after the first king who unified Upper and Lower Egypt. Oh, how fitting! <laughs> <laughs> so the reason I'm here today, aside from being able to see her beautiful face in person, I thought it would be a lot of fun to watch the mummy with an actual Egyptologist, as the title suggests. <laughs> the truths behind the movie and also kind of the Hollywoodizations, I guess you could call it. Pretty much have always been fascinated with ancient Egypt. This movie, I would say, is probably a big source of that because my dad did show it to us when we were younger and yeah, we're just, we're just gonna go ahead and watch the movie. So you yourself have not seen this in a while. Not a lot. No. So that's perfect. The perfect amount of cheese is how I like to describe this movie. So here we go. Because <laughs> there's always a perfectly screeching flock of birds <laughs> around the Great Pyramids. <laughs> so we're that's looking it. at the Pyramids of Giza. Yes. And they, they've even rendered how part of the top of the Pyramid of Khafra still has the outer casing stones, all right. but all of this oh, architecture yeah, is, is much later in date. Mm. That, that's all New Kingdom and no temple complex like that. And those are kind of cool. That's based on some cryo sphinxes, so ram-headed sphinxes as opposed to human-headed sphinxes. Thebes, city of the living. No pyramids <laughs> in Thebes. Yeah, some of the temple architecture, that's not bad. It's a little fantastical, mm -hmm. but not bad for evoking Thebes mm -hmm. in the reign of Seti the First. But pyramids, 500 miles too <laughs> How north. else would you know you're in Egypt if they didn't put, <laughs> come on now. Birthplace of Anaxunamun. <laughs> Any comment on Anaxunamunza? <laughs> Weirdly enough, that is not inappropriate mm. in terms of ancient Egyptian dress. There are... Dang. Good for them. <laughs> beaded net dresses, but there's this famous story where King Snofru was really bored in the palace. And so his chief magician, much like kind of the position of Imhotep, the magician gets together the most beautiful palace women and dresses them in nothing but nets, mm. like fishnet. That's it. <laughs> wow. And the pectoral that she's wearing is a pretty good copy of one of a princess named Sahathor Unit. It's in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Oh. So the, the two falcons and the cartouche in the yeah. center. So although they preferred red matte lipstick to that mm, nice to, um, uh, lip gloss. A Cher-esque <laughs> gold. Oh, that's cool. The word for bodyguard is Medje mm -hmm. or Medjoy. Mm -hmm. The Medjoy or Medje were originally a tribe that lived in ancient Nubia to the southeast of Egypt. And they were employed as policemen and guardians. And by the time of the New Kingdom, by the time of Seti the First, they it was a general term for soldier or bodyguard. Huh. Those are some big hepesh swords. <laughs> So one interesting thing about royal assassinations okay. in ancient Egypt yeah. is the couple of times where they actually talk about it is because there's an investigation and a trial and witnesses oh, and wow. judges. Huh. And I think we don't think about that enough. Over and over again, we're bombarded with this idea that there was not the rule of law in ancient Egypt. Yeah. And I think that's one of their greatest accomplishments as a civilization. Beyond pyramids and tombs and all of that, like that's really great. But I think if you ask them, they would say their literature and their right. laws mm -hmm. and their religion, I believe, 
their most enduring contributions. Taking Anaxunamun's corpse to Hamunatra, city of the dead, burial site for the sons of pharaohs. And yeah. Tell me about Hamunatra. <laughs> I don't even know where they got that name. This made it up. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Mm. I do like the two horse chariots though. Mm. That's nice. The black book of the dead from its holy resting place. Oh yeah. This was something I remember from last time I saw it. Book of the Dead. Yes. <laughs> the ancient Egyptians called it the book, or scroll more properly, of going forth by day. What he is holding, what we think of as a book, is actually called a codex. And that doesn't really come into common use until the late Roman era. This is one of our most prized possessions. It's a painting. And this is a hermit, a Coptic monk. We actually loaned it to a museum exhibit, which is why we have the oh, label. Oh, that's awesome. So this is not stolen from a museum. It was actually loaned. <laughs> sure. We got to keep the label. <laughs> the scroll is the traditional format, and what he's actually writing on looks like more of a codex. When they say Book of the Dead, it's a scroll. There's one cool example that actually uh, John pulled out for me. This is a codex, a wax tablet, and you can see it has leaves. It would have had wax here, and then you could write whatever you wanted, and then erase it. So they did have things that you can point to and say, okay, you can open and close it like a book, but they would never write a religious text hmm. on this. That was always a papyrus scroll. Her vital organs removed and placed in five... Four canopic jars. Oh. There have always been and always shall be four. Four canopic jars. The middle one is the one that's not legit. You have the baboon headed, the jackal headed, the human headed, falcon headed. But this bizarre lion headed canopic jar, completely invented. I'm learning so much. <laughs> Five sacred canopic jars. Mm, no. No. Nope. <laughs> oh, this totally happens all the time in ancient Egypt, oh, right? Yes, very much so. <laughs> Condemned to endure the home die. The worst of all ancient curses. <laughs> the worst of all ancient curses. <laughs> there are curses, but they're not curses on, say, archaeologists or tourists respectfully mm -hmm. visiting ancient Egyptian tombs. There are curse formula occasionally when you come into a tomb with an impure purpose. Mm. Like so grave it says, digging or something? Exactly. And then it says that they will uh, wring the person's neck like a bird, mm -hmm. or that a snake will be against them in the land and a crocodile in the water. So they do have some cool curses, but nothing like was reported in the 1920s with the discovery right. of the tomb of John Comet. Like, death shall come on s swift wings. I yeah, think that's yeah. the phraseology. <laughs> oh no. They're supposedly flesh eating. Mm -hmm. right? Supposedly. Supposedly. Oh wait, they're not actually. No. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just a minor inconvenience for Imhotep, really. It's and not. He's, he's like, ew. Would just crawl around and be like, why are we trapped in here? <laughs> they're also using agricultural hoes as shovels. Do they have shovels that they just decided that these would look more old timey? I think I think so. They're like, you know, they could have all kinds of keys and things they very obviously didn't have. But no shovels. But that, no shovels. That's where they draw the line. Now, how did the French Foreign Legion get to Egypt? <laughs> Camels. <laughs> Camels. <laughs> Because I can I can read and write ancient Egyptian, decipher hieroglyphics and heretic. <laughs> Hieroglyphs, mm -hmm. not hieroglyphics. Hieroglyphic is an adjective. Unless you're talking about something that's like hieroglyphs, but not hieroglyphs. Hieratic, they're using properly, which is the cursive version. If you wanted to sit down and write somebody a letter, you would write in hieratic on a papyrus, or mm -hmm. even in ostracon, a little flake of limestone, or even a potsherd. You no respect for the dead. <laughs> Sometimes. I'd rather like to join them. Well, I wish you would do it sooner rather than later before you ruin my career. The Although that's the oh. goddess Maat, actually from the tomb of Seti the First. Yeah, the ostrich feather that she wears on her head. And you can see, actually, makes that shape. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, I was there. You swear. Every damn day. No, I didn't mean that. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brendan. And without orders, they marched halfway across Libya and into Egypt to find that city. Does that they explain? explain? It helps. It helps. <laughs> 
That's a great dick hit. <laughs> I want that. Well, I think we need to sell vintage. Yes, I'd can. buy Actually, it. They, they still make things that are fairly similar to that. I don't know what I'd use it for, but I want one. <laughs> Dust knickknacks. Um, <laughs> it can be like a house <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Oh my god, it's a sanetche. A preparation. Okay, sanetche, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. It's a shrine associated with Anubis, so it was used in mummification. There you go. Detail there. A little vocab in they there. They still have not made up for the flesh-eating scarabs. But and they take out your heart as well. Actually, they don't take out the heart. That's the one thing that's left in. For the Egyptians, when they talk about the heart, it's also the mind, the seat mm. of intelligence mm -hmm. and emotion. They didn't realize the purpose of the brain. They knew it was important, though, because there is a surgeon's manual, and they knew that they had to relieve pressure on the brain if there was swelling. Oh. So they get that yeah, the brain yeah, yeah. is significant. Maybe that's why they put five of those jars, because they were like, yeah, the heart too. That could be, uh, yeah. Sherlock in over here. <laughs> he that shall not be named. Ooh, that might say UT. UT Renef. Oh my god, that is accurate. <laughs> the one without a name. That's not bad. One of the things they do there and in the tomb robbery papyri, say there's a name Mary Amen, beloved of Amun. Mm -hmm. They'll instead change it to Mesjedi Amen, he whom Amun hates. Ooh. <laughs> so destroying the name yeah. or changing the name into a curse was the best way that the ancient Egyptians imagined of denying someone yeah, immortality. Ouch. Yeah. A key. Huh. This is exactly how archaeology works. Yeah. You know? oh. Pressurized salt acid. <laughs> <laughs> no booby traps? They yeah. didn't do things like that. It's yeah. become embedded in our popular consciousness. Yeah. Because of Indiana Jones and the mummy. Exactly, yeah. The reason why the tombs in the Valley of the Kings stayed as safe as they did, as long as they did, was because of the Medjay. Okay. See, 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 he's reading it backwards. You could tell that. Oh. See, he's reading left to right. But see how these birds are facing? Yeah. That text reads right to left. Oh, he will die, namely anyone who will open this chest. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Death will come on swift wings to whomsoever opens this See, see, they're stealing from... The post Tutankhamen made up Curse of the Pharaohs. He's, he's still juicy. juicy. <laughs> yes. Death is only the beginning. Can we turn it upside down? Yeah. Like, is that an N? That looks like a jet serpent. Is text. that supposed to be like death stick? That's what I was know, kind of thinking. T. Unless we're putting it at the end of an A B nominal. Okay. Hip. Oh, it's Hatia! Beginning, and they've written it in hieratic. Well, it should have been poo. Oh, that's a P, and that's that ooh. Be an A poo B nominal sentence. Poo is a copula, which basically functions as an equal sign, saying A equals B. Mm -hmm. So it actually means death is the beginning. <laughs> also, standard archaeological practice. <laughs> Pull as hard as you can. And done. I thought they eat them slowly. <laughs> They're like, all right, we're done. That was good. Burp. Where was he hiding that? <laughs> he just had it in his little skin sack or something. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't like cats. <laughs> that makes no sense. If you walked into an ancient Serious Egyptian house trouble. and asked them, what is the name of your cat? You know what they would say? No. Mew. Mew? Mew's the word for cat in ancient Egyptian. <laughs> Mew. Dogs, they gave people names. So if you ask an ancient Egyptian what the name of their dog was, George. They would. <laughs> they obviously liked cats, and cats were associated with the goddess Bastet, but they don't seem to have given them as much individual personality. Which is weird, because you always think, when you think Egypt, you think they love cats. Exactly. They just love cats. So there you go. The Egyptians <laughs> like dogs, probably even more than cats. Ooh. Average Egyptian, hard to say, in terms of naming practices. Cats are the guardians of the underworld. Well, fear them until he is fully regenerated. And then he they are not the guardians of the underworld. <laughs> no! 
<laughs> no. Look at I got. <laughs> <laughs> Quicksand! No quicksand in Egypt. No quicksand in Egypt. No quicksand in Egypt. You need moisture. True. <laughs> that says imhet. So I, an M, an H, and a T. And imhet is one of the words for the netherworld. Only in a very few religious texts is that used. In 2018, John and I published the first complete English translation <gasps> of the Netherworld books. The word that's tattooed on his forehead mm -hmm. there is actually referenced a couple of times. Well, there you in go. The oh my goodness. Ta-da! Did we applaud the ending? Yay, well done. All right, so overall, how did, <laughs> how did they do? Overall, I would say poorly. <laughs> wah, wah. Fun adventure story. Yep. So many missed opportunities. There were a few vaguely interesting illusions, like the Medjai. Mm -hmm. That that was cool. That yeah. was legitimate. But in so many ways, they just missed the mark. Especially when you have so many cool things that, that you can pull from instead of just making up. They're using you know, legitimate information from the ancient Egyptian netherworld books from the tomb of Seti the First. There's so much cool mm -hmm. stuff that happens yeah. that you, you could have included. Yeah. And it would have been both accurate and I think even more compelling. Mm -hmm. Well, this was fun. This is the amazing Colleen. I will have all her information down below so you can check her out. Thank you so much Thank for you. hanging out with me and watching a movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> I love you guys, whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload every Friday and we have fun here. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. I'm not gonna cover the ones, it's too far away. <laughs> my He's like, hello. <laughs> this video is about me. I'm here, I'm ready for my interview. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry a for, yes. I'm one of an ancient I'm gonna talk, talk about my ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> Kim, Kimmy's begging. Hold on, wait. I just, I gotta, I gotta go about your business. So I'm not here. Oh, <laughs> here. oh good girl. <laughs> Perfect. Emo tip, you dog. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, stuck. And the waffle Perfect. iron is late 1700s, colonial period. Oh. Waffle iron. They made waffles back then? <laughs> they did! <laughs> what? Segway. Segway. <laughs> there is a curse upon this chest. Curse my... Yeah. I know you do that <laughs> all the time. There is a curse upon this chest. I want to be the, the person who says curse my ass. That curse I... my ass with a cowboy <laughs> hat on. And good old trap door. How many times have you seen it? A lot. Oh, Benny. Don't show Frodo this. I won't show Frodo this. Like, no, this sorry. Is